So perfect song to be coming on my playlist right now. Master of Puppets. <laughs> Love it. Song is so great. So about what we're talking about on this channel. And I'm trying to, uh, I like to, <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm ready to learn something on drums or bass, I, I just have to like pretend I'm playing it before I get over to the, to actually playing it. I have to play air drums to it and then get over to my practice space. Um, that's how I do it. Anyway, uh, so I woke up today to a really large uh, contribution to my channel. Um, from Melanie, I cannot thank you enough. Um, and asking me, uh, what a, what a blessing to wake up to. Um, so thank you very much for doing that. Uh, I was in tears actually with the, uh, amount of emails and, uh, people signing up with me this morning. So this is just crazy. Um, I am so happy I quit my job in the beginning of January. I think that is the, the best decision I could have ever made. Not to mention that for those of you, again, following my channel, know that, uh, you know, my narcissistic boss and, and the narcissistic work environment he created was literally the last extremely toxic place um, that uh, was affecting me in so many ways. I had to, I had to get out and... Uh, and I did it, and I did it on a whim. I literally walked out. I've never done that before in my life, and it was honestly the most liberating thing I've ever done in my life. I was scared. I had no plan. I didn't know what I was gonna do uh, to bring in money to continue paying my bills and 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 uh, you know making sure I can take care of myself and my cats. And so it was crazy, but it is the it is the best decision I ever made. And and since leaving there and uh, leaving my toxic marriage, uh, things have been looking up for me. And uh, I, I woke up today in tears, just, you know, thankful to God for, for putting me through this journey because there was a reason for it. And uh, I'm so happy I have an opportunity to share my experiences with people that not only completely understand where I'm coming from, but uh, are looking at me in ways that I, I, I'm able to try and help and, and support you during what I know you're going through. Um, so, so having said that, today's topic is how can you tell, uh, and this is by a Contributions from Melanie asking me this question, how can you tell the difference between just a typical um, uh, everyday a-hole um, and, and, and a narcissist. So we're talking about people who potentially could be, uh, toxic themselves with their own situations and issues. Um, you know, a lot of times they call them, uh, womanizers, uh, for, for women, we call them whores. Uh, we call this, this, th these things that people are doing ghosting, they ghost you all of a sudden, you know, they just disappear. You don't ever hear from them again. Or uh, you know they are they are cheaters. You caught them cheating on you. Uh, you know whatever the toxic behavior or a hole uh, kind of person we're dealing with. So there is a difference between these kind of people and narcissists. And I'm about to dive into this for this video today. Today, sorry, I'm, I'm um, I am going to be doing some cleaning in here, and I just left the gym, and my hair is really crazy. So I figured I'd continue to wear my hat. Um, anyway, okay, let's get into this. I'm going to first start off by telling you all the different signs of a narcissist. And, and this is anybody that has dealt with these beings will know exactly what I'm talking about here in the list, uh, of, of traits and things that they do. Uh, let's start with the grandiose sense of self-importance. They think that they are more important than you. They think that they are more important than anybody that surrounds them in their life. They matter first. They come first. We're talking selfishness at a level that is indescribable. Okay. Uh, lives in a fantasy world that supports their delusions of grandeur. 
constantly living in a fantasy world. Reality and truth to them, they don't ever want to see. They, they, they run from it at all costs. They will do anything to not have truths revealed of things they've done or, or, or how they act, how they behave. And if you bring that up to them, you will pay for that. They live in this continuous world of, of having delusions of grandeur about who they are, what they do, how they operate, what they do for work. They'll, they'll, they'll fabricate and uh, exaggerate any, any sort of things that they've done in life uh, to make it sound like they're somebody that they completely are not. Uh, need for constant praise and admiration. This is continuous. You will, you will always see them looking for attention. They might not do this in the very beginning when you're with them, but in time you'll notice, you know, if you're talking, you're at a restaurant and you're talking to a narcissist, they cannot stand having to listen about anybody, to anybody else. They're not interested in, in what's going on with you. They're interested in seeing, they're looking around the room to see who's looking at them, uh, checking out the waitress, uh, uh, thinking about themselves, thinking about what they're going to do when they leave the, the, the second they're away from you. A sense of entitlement. These people truly believe that they are entitled to act however they want without any consequences or karma coming their way. They truly believe this. They believe that they are entitled to have as, as many bank accounts hidden from you as they want. Uh, to have as many uh, partners on the side that they want, to sleep with whoever they want, uh, do whatever they want. If they feel like shutting off their phone and not coming home and telling you that, hey, people's phones die, you better, you, you know, you better smarten up and stop uh, being controlling with me because you were trying to get in touch with me and we're only married, we only live together, we're only together. You shouldn't have to want to know why I'm not home and why my phone's off for the third time this week. They think that that's, there's nothing wrong with that. You have the problem. There's something wrong with you that you're even asking. How dare you ask me to be accountable to you or responsible for anything? Absolutely not. These people are incapable of any sort of accountability and responsibility whatsoever. Exploits others without guilt or shame. These people not only exploit you, but they enjoy humiliating you at such deep levels, okay? They love to humiliate you. They love to uh, make a fool of you. They get off on this. They get off on, on sneaking around on you and giggling with, with the person they're doing it with. And that person is, is giggling right along with whatever lies and, and BS they're, that they're telling them that you are and, and, and who you are and why that they're, they're cheating. They always have a story for it. Uh, but the re reality is they enjoy humiliating you. Um, and along with that, I'm going to just go right into it. That's down the line here of these traits. Uh, they are serial cheaters, serial uh, pathological cheaters. Uh, along with that, these people are pathological liars. They lie so often they cannot keep their story straight. Their story will change. Bits and pieces of the story will be added here and there. The more you bring it up, the more you want, you, the more you seek the truth, the more they're going to lie to you. They do not want you uh, getting into what they think is their business and having to tell the truth. They're not going to do that. They're going to continue. They'll be up. They'll be in the courtroom with, with a transcript that, you know, with an actual email that they sent that you caught them on or, or text message describing the, the, the things that they've done. And they'll still have a story for that. These people can make up stories on a dime. They, they're good at it. They, they're like, they're like improv actors of lies. They can, they can just come up with something on a whim and, and you'll literally, you'll be so confused at a, you know, they get you. This is why people are stuck in these relationships with these people because they get you. They, they get you in ways you never imagined. You're believing their lies and their stories because they're so convincing. They should win, you know, they, they are, they are actors at heart. They should just go to Hollywood and stay there with all the other, you know, satanic uh, cult 
cultish, disgusting uh, celebrities that, that are, I don't even want to get into Hollywood right now. Okay. Um, frequently demeans, intimidates, bullies, belittles others. If you've ever worked for a narcissistic boss, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And they do it in such covert ways. But then you find out they're doing it to so many other people. It's not just you. You're not, you're not any more special than the rest of them. They enjoy taking credit for your work. I'll do another video about narcissistic bosses. I mean, that's another video in itself. But uh, yeah, they're, they're bullies. Best way to know you're dealing with a narcissist is how they act at home versus how they act in public when other people are around. And if they're really, really good at it, uh, they actually wear different masks for different people. You'd be in shock to see how they're acting with the other with the other p person on the side as opposed to how they act with you, as opposed to how they act in front of their boss, as opposed to how they act in front of a speaking engagement. They'll put on every kind of acting role that they could think of and, uh, and play that role for whoever they're in front of. They're chameleons. Uh... And, and yes, bullying is just, is just goes without saying of how they bully people. They are bullies. And it's mostly because they had a bully in the house doing this to them. Um, triangulating and pitting others against one another. This is huge. This is huge. One of their favorite things to do is to getting you uh, all riled up, angry, upset, uh, Things like, you know, shutting their phone off like I'm talking about. Driving you absolutely crazy because you're, you're crazy in search for the truth. That now they've gotten you to act out of your character. Text, call, do all kinds of things you would not normally do. Now you're, at, you're, you're the detective. You're out there being the detective trying to get answers. You're acting like, you know, a not yourself. You're out of control. Now they see, now they've got you right where they want you. And then they're going to use that and they're going to, they're going to go and they're going to go sit with somebody of the opposite sex or whatever, uh, somebody at work and say, you know, listen to this voicemail from my wife last night. What a nut, huh? This is what I have to deal with. And, you know, their, their new triangulating partner here is buying into all the stories, just as we did when we first met them. And they're telling us that they were the victim with their ex. And, you know, they have it all down packed what they're going to say in case you heard what they really did uh, to their ex. You'd be in shock. And they were abusing them physically and putting them in hospitals and doing all kinds of horrible things. Oh, but they had answers for that, too, in case you heard that in the community. They had an answer for why they did that. Anyway, uh, yeah, and, and a lot of times they're going to triangulate you with the people in their life that they know will believe their lies, the weakest people in their life, most likely their family because their family is who raised them and they're all, they all think, act, uh, operate in the same, the same uh, ways. So, of course, they're going to believe them and their stories about you. And they're especially going to do the triangulation thing when they're trying to get you jealous. They're trying to get an emotion out of you. They're trying to get a reaction out of you. Most likely you caught them doing something. So now they're even more on a conquest to get in triangulation going to pay you back for catching them in the act. And, and it, it will continue. This stuff continues after you've left them or after they've discarded you. They're still trying to get to you in any which way they can. The smear campaigns. They start the smear campaigns. They might as well go down the street with the signs. <laughs> you know? And, and we're getting to a point, guys, that the narcissists don't know what else to do because they're getting sought out. They're getting caught. People are talking about this. There's no other... Their, their games are over. So the only other card they have to play right now is to call you the narcissist and really make people think that you're the one. You're the one. That's the only thing that they have left to try and play here. So uh, some more, some more uh, traits of these folks. Greedy. Very greedy people. They're obsessed with the idea of money, power, control, fame. 
this is the stuff that they sit around and, and dream about and want to be. The worst, the worst thing for a narcissist is dying being nobody. Nobody knew who they were. They weren't on the cover of a magazine. Uh, they weren't, uh, they didn't have, you know, 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. Whatever it is that they, they're fantasizing about for themselves. That is their, their worst fear. Dying, being, be, not being known for them and, and, and what they think it is that they are. Um, so yeah, they, they often are very cheap individuals and the only time you're going to see them spending money is when they have opportunity to spend that money on themselves. They're not going to spend it on anybody else unless it's got, it's going to benefit them some way, shape or form or make them look good publicly. You'll, these are the type you'll see, uh, they can't do anything in the community, uh, helping others or, or doing, uh, uh, uh any type of like fundraiser or, you know, event uh, to donate to, to a charity or any type of charity work without going online and telling everybody, look at me, look what I just did. Look what I did. I'm doing this for, for people. Look at me. Look at me. I'm a nice, I'm a nice person. See? I like animals. I just did a benefit show for them. Look at me. Um... Narcissists are very inconsistent people. They're very inconsistent. They could treat you really well one moment. Next moment, they're treating you like absolute garbage. The next moment, And this, this is the up and down thing they do to get your self-esteem to a point that you don't know who you are anymore or what your value or worth is. So they're constantly doing this inconsistent game. It's part of their manipulation to getting you to feel terrible about yourself. Uh, narcissists will use other people. They'll take advantage of other people for their gain. Whatever it is that they think, again, that they're going to get something out of, they will go to those extremes and they will step over anyone to get to the next step. Okay? And they, they, they get off on, on doing these things. Um, so, so yeah, this is, these, these are some of, this is just some of the traits of a narcissist, okay? Um, and the breakups with narcissists, you'll know that you were, were with a narcissist because the breakups are not typical normal breakups that you'd have with somebody that is not one of them, okay? Uh, the breakups will be uh, these, these awful patterns of them playing the cat and mouse game with you. You're gonna reel them out you're gonna you're gonna cast them out to reel them back in. You're gonna cast them out to reel them back in. They they love challenges. They don't want you going around and talking poorly about them. They don't want you to stop being in love with them. They want to keep you in their little pool. That when at whatever point in time they want to jump in the pool with you, they can. That's what they're looking for. They don't want you. They want, they think of all their partners as a, as a mere ex extension of themselves. You know, you will always, they, they look at you like you're, you're their property. So they will continue messing with you once you are out of the picture and uh, no matter which way it went, if you discarded them, they discarded you, it doesn't matter. They still want you in the picture. Um, they are, uh, they're, they're trying to still mess with your skull, with your dome. They're trying to mess with it. They're trying to mess with your heart. They're trying to mess with your soul. They wanted to take your soul down with them. So, so it is very, you know, after all the horrible things that they've done, they will replace, a narcissist will replace you like that. You will know it's a narcissist because narcissists cannot be alone at all. They won't do it. It is the most scary, that's another thing that scares the living daylights out of them. They won't do it. They have to be with someone. They have to replace you like that because they have to prove to themselves that it was you, why things didn't work out. And, and before you, 
and, and they replaced you, they replaced the, the, their ex uh, with you very quickly. Um, you, you just didn't know that. They were overlapping. They have to do this. They have to, they're the most, in, narcissists are the most insecure people on this planet. So they, they are only gonna feel like they have value and worth if they've got somebody to show next to them. That's it. And uh, their reasons for picking that person can go across the board. It's whatever it is they can use them and need them for to look okay. Um, especially if, uh, I won't even get into that. Um, okay, so, so the difference being, that's how you're gonna know that, that this is a narcissist. Now, a typical a-hole and a typical womanizer, a typical whore, uh, a typical cheat, a typical liar, all right? Um, these people are pretty much out there with their behavior. Like, what I'm trying to say is the a-hole will reveal that they're an a-hole pretty much right away. You know, you go on a date with the a-hole and uh, you'll see the a-hole quality. See, the narcissist is, uh, you know, getting off on being a sneak, fooling, deceiving people. Um, and so they, they do, they do their, their a-hole tactics in very covert ways, but the typical a-hole, um, is, is going to, you know, pretty much show you that with their behavior. Um, they'll have no problems coming right out with, with who it is they are. Uh, and that is the difference. And, you know, um, People that, you know, a normal breakup, like let's say, for example, you were with someone and they weren't a narcissist and they did meet someone else, okay? And and then they they ghosted you and they took off and you didn't hear from them. Um, this stuff can happen. Well, you know, they're still a weak person if they didn't explain to you um, what happened or who, you know, uh, uh, you know, why this happened or what have you. I mean, things like this can happen all the time, but they wouldn't have exhibited all these other behaviors that I'm talking about, all right? You wouldn't have seen all that throughout the relationship. Um, and typically anybody with a decent bone in their body, uh, you know, first of all, would, would confront you with what happened and tell you what happened and be open and honest about that. So this is what I have discovered is the difference between someone that might be toxic or, or, or doing something bad in the relationship that they shouldn't have, but they did it anyway, or, um, to a narcissist, okay? Here is the difference. People that are not narcissists, okay, can actually look inward and make change. That is the difference or admit to their wrongdoings. A narcissist will never admit to what they've done wrong. And if they do, let's say that they have a weak moment in their narc brain themselves and they're like, oh, you know what? Yeah, I was wrong. I, I, shouldn't, have, I shouldn't have contacted that girl on Facebook. I shouldn't, have send the, I shouldn't have accepted and sent naked photos back and forth. <laughs> a narcissist would say something like that, but then two seconds later be like, but I didn't send a naked photo. It was just her. She did it, not me. You know, they'll, they'll, their, their lies keep changing up. That, and, and, and two seconds later, they'll be blaming you for it. They still can't take responsibility for anything. It's always going to be somebody else's fault in the narc brain. Always. No matter what it is they've done. Listen, they were a narcissist long before you came in the picture. They're a narcissist right now. If you're with them or not with them, they're still a narcissist. They are incapable. They do not want and, and refuse to look inward and make changes. Now, somebody that might have that might have made a mistake with you, might you guys might have broken up, they might have come back around again, would most likely have a story that they were alone. Or would tell you the truth that they saw somebody else, but it didn't work out, and they really loved and missed you, and uh, and and are probably telling the truth. 
because they didn't have all these other traits going on. But if they had all these other traits going on and things that they were doing that sounds an awful lot like what I was talking about in, in this video, you cannot believe them when they come back hoovering and telling you that they made a mistake and they're sorry because narcissists are not sorry for anything that they do. They're not. They, they will even do the fake crocodile tears with you just to getting you to cave. And uh, a narcissist cannot be alone. As I said, they can't do it. You know, a typical person that messed up and maybe was a jerk, like I said, um, you know, with time, with age, uh, you know, sometimes people are really young and they have to make these mistakes in life uh, to learn. They're, they have the capability, though, to have wisdom and to learn and to grow from these things. Um, and growth could potentially happen when you two have, have you know, have parted ways. Um, I've, I've discovered in my, you know, just in my experiences that men in particular have a really hard time being alone. Um, whereas women are more comfortable being independent and being alone. Um, men don't like that. But a narcissist, it's not that they don't like being alone. It's that they can't. They cannot. They are, like oxygen to us is a, a narcissist having somebody to feed off of. That is their oxygen. That is how they live uh, so that is my video today. I hope that this helps explain away your question of whether or not you were dating or, or, um, involved with in a relationship, uh, with a narcissist, as opposed to somebody that, you know, again, might've made a mistake, might be a player, might be a whore, you know, players and whores typically are what they are. They're pretty much out there with it. <laughs> okay, you can tell by their photos, you can tell by how they act, the places that they go, the behaviors they, they do, the things that they do, the many partners that they, they will go through, all right? But the narcissist has all these other traits and uh, typically is very, very, very sneaky, very sneaky about it. So I hope this makes sense. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them for me in the comments section. If you're interested in working with me, I will leave all my information in the drop down menu. Uh, and uh, uh, thank you for those of you that have been uh, uh, contributing to the channel. And uh, I have some other videos in, in um, file here that I'm gonna be doing coming up uh, that you guys have suggested and and thank you for for paying me for your uh your suggestions and and wanting to see me do a video on this i am trees face it is time we all face the truth together <laughs>